Good day. Today, let's talk about a new Russian submarine, the Khabarovsk, the first of a new class of nuclear-powered submarines known as the Projet 08951 class. In the Soviet and now the Russian naval system, the term Projet refers to the official design or blueprint of a new naval ship class. Essentially, its engineering project number assigned by the design bureau, such as Rubin, which in this case designed the Khabarovsk. During the Cold War, Soviet ship designs were highly classified. The project number was thus an internal identifier, allowing the Soviet Navy to discuss designs securely without revealing any details. To make it easier for Western militaries to keep track of different Russian warships, Western observers gave each class their own NATO reporting names. What makes the Habarovsk so special is that it is intended to be armed with the Poseidon nuclear-armed torpedoes. The Poseidon is an autonomous unmanned underwater vehicle that can be armed with a nuclear warhead. Because it is nuclear-powered, it will essentially have unlimited range in every practical sense. The Khabarovsk was launched in the northern city of Severodvinsk on the 1st of November 2025. The builder is the Sefmash Shipyard, part of the United Shipbuilding Corporation. Sefmash is one of the principal historical shipyards for building Russian and Soviet nuclear-powered submarines, and is the only shipyard in Russia currently building nuclear submarines. The launch ceremony was attended by the Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belousov and the head of the Russian Navy Alexander Moisev. The Khabarovsk is slated to join the Pacific Fleet after its commissioned, possibly sometime in 2026. Reportedly, the boat has been laid down all the way back in 2014, so it has taken over a decade to launch. This suggests that the construction process has run into unexpected difficulties and challenging circumstances. We can well imagine that resources being diverted to the war efforts in Ukraine and towards managing geopolitical tensions on Russia's western borders have delayed the construction of the submarine. Given it is the lead boat, it's likely to have run into technical difficulties and teething issues that are typical in the construction of the lead boats of a new class of warships. The Habarovsk was designed by the Rubin Central Design Bureau for Marine Engineering and is reportedly based on the hull of the Bore class a tried and tested and proven class of Russian nuclear ballistic missile submarines, or SSBN. However, unlike the Bore, the Habarovsk does not have a section for carrying ballistic missiles. In fact, the parts of the submarine that would be carrying submarine-launched ballistic missiles on a normal SSBN has been removed. So, even though the Habarovsk is based on the Bore, it's ended up significantly smaller than the Bore, at around 10,000 tons surface displacement, compared to around 15,000 tons for the Bore. That's a huge reduction in displacement. Habarovsk is probably around 120 or 130 meters long, which is far less than the 170 meters of the Bore. Again, thanks to the removal of its ballistic missile compartment. Despite not carrying nuclear ballistic missiles, however, the Russian government clearly sees the new submarine as a weapon for nuclear deterrence. The Russian Ministry of Defense labels the Habarovsk as a nuclear-powered missile cruiser, a term that it also applies to its traditional ballistic missile submarines like the Bore and the previous Delta classes. Like the Bore, the Habarovsk appears to have a pump jet propulsor, as evidenced by images of the shrouded propulsor on the stern section during the launch ceremony. However, the shroud has been covered to keep secret the details of the propulsor. 
given it is shrouded, and the Habarovsk is based on the Bore, this is almost certainly a pump jet. According to open source reports, a total of three or four boats has been ordered for the Projet 08951 class. But the subsequent boats following the Habarovsk may not actually continue with using the hull of the Bore. In fact, the second boat, the Ulyanovsk, will reportedly be based on a Yasin class submarine hull. This may suggest that the Russian Navy is not satisfied with the performance of the Bore class hull and wants to try something different. Given that the Yasin class, as an attack submarine, obviously does not need to carry ballistic missiles, its hull might be more optimal for another submarine class that does not require ballistic missiles either. All things considered, the Yasin has a strong reputation for being a stealthy and silent submarine. The Bore does not quite have the same level of reputation, even though it's a big improvement over previous Russian ballistic missile submarines. So, it makes sense for the Projet 08951 to use the Yasin class hull, if possible. Construction of the Ulyanovsk based on the Yasin, is apparently at an advanced stage. Reportedly, the Habarovsk and presumably other future boats in the class will be able to carry six Poseidon nuclear torpedoes. Habarovsk is not the first submarine to be able to launch the Poseidon, but it's the first submarine that is purpose-designed around the Poseidon torpedo all the way from inception. In 2022, the Russian Navy introduced the Belgorod, an earlier submarine that can deploy the Poseidon, among other purposes. However, the Belgorod was converted from an Oscar II-class nuclear-guided missile submarine and was not purpose-built to use the Poseidon torpedoes, unlike the new Habarovsk. Poseidon was first revealed by the Russian Navy in 2015 and reportedly tested for the first time in 2016. There is much uncertainty over the specs of the Poseidon and how it will be used in practice. It's reportedly around 100 tons displacement submerged and around 24 meters in length. It's a deep diving torpedo, or more accurately, an unmanned underwater vehicle with reported maximum depth of 1,000 meters. Arms control experts cited by Reuters suggested that it's powered by a miniature nuclear reactor with a liquid metal cooling system. As a nuclear-powered drone, its range would effectively be unlimited. Its speed is unclear, although possibly on the high end for an underwater projectile, given its nuclear propulsion. The same individuals cited by Reuters estimate that the Poseidon would have a nuclear warhead of around 2 megatons. For comparison, an American Minutesman ICBM based on land deploys a nuclear warhead with a blast yield of between 0.3 and 0.4 megatons. However, Two megatons for the Poseidon remain magnitudes less than the most powerful Russian nuclear weapons. The Tsar Bomba, tested in 1961, had an explosive yield of about 50 megatons. It remains very much unclear what purpose the Poseidon serves. Conventional thinking is that it serves as a strategic instrument of nuclear deterrent, albeit via unconventional delivery vehicles. It could be used against naval bases or coastal infrastructure, or, in the worst scenario, used against major ports or even coastal cities. The more damaging and devastating the potential impact in terms of lives and property damages, the more likely is the use intended for strategic purposes rather than operational military purposes. An underwater nuclear explosion presumably has to happen at a fairly shallow depth 
to have a desired impet. Another possibility is that the Poseidon does not rely on its nuclear blast to do immediate damage, but uses the explosion to contaminate a large area of water, doing long-term damage over time to the surrounding waters and the environment. Another possible use for the Poseidon is to serve as a super weapon, a wonder weapon, against large naval formations. For example, a single Poseidon could destroy large parts of an aircraft carrier strike group, even though ships in the task force would be spread out to an extent. Given its large nuclear blast yield, the Poseidon could choose to detonate beyond the range of much of the carrier group's anti-submarine warfare weapons, with the exception of the aviation asset. The blast may still be large enough to cause huge damage to the carrier force, while enabling the Poseidon to stay out of range of enemy weapons before it detonates. In general, naval defensive weapons defending against aerial threats are more developed and advanced than weapons that defend against torpedoes. This means a carrier group, such as those commonly deployed by the US Navy, may have a very difficult time defending against the Poseidon, given this is a nuclear torpedo with very large explosive power. Of course, if Russia were to use the Poseidon against a US carrier group, even during a time of war, that would mean nuclear escalation, which they should hopefully, think twice before doing. In any case, I'm just saying it's possible the Poseidon can be used against high-value naval formations, like a carrier force. In short, the Habarovsk marks a clear shift in Russian naval thinking, a purpose-built submarine platform tailored to deliver the Poseidon nuclear torpedo rather than traditional ballistic missiles. Its launch is as much a technological statement as it is a strategic one, a reminder that nuclear deterrence is evolving rapidly in the undersea domain. Yet, huge uncertainties remain about how Poseidon would actually be used, how effective it would be in practice, and what risk its deployment creates for escalation, arms control efforts, and coastal cities and nations in the West. At a technical level, it also highlights how naval defenses may need to evolve further with respect to defending against underwater weapons of mass destruction, and to achieve a better balance between defenses against threats from the air and defenses against torpedoes. Because with the induction of the Poseidon, Certain torpedoes are no longer a short-range weapon, given their large-yield nuclear warhead.